Welcome to History Repeated. Hi, I'm John Myers, and we'll get to today's video in just a moment. On History Repeated, we try to tell history in a way that makes you want to tell others about it. That way, history gets repeated. If you like this video, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that when videos are uploaded that you have an interest in, you'll know about it. On today's episode, we're going to learn what became of the Mayflower. And as the story starts to unfold, you're going to be amazed at the answer. This was originally a Paul Harvey rest of the story story, which was an audio broadcast. And we've illustrated it to make it more watchable on the YouTube visual medium. So I hope you enjoy today's story on what became of the Mayflower. Now, the rest of the story. Dr. Harris stood in the darkened doorway of the farmer's barn silent and staring. As his eyes adjusted, the shadows parted like curtains, revealing the shapes and the dimensions behind them. And there was something curious here, something anomalous to an English village in the outskirts of London. Whatever was out of place, Harris decided, had little to do with the age of the ancient structure. For if one had stood in that very doorway nearly three centuries previous, that is to say when the barn was new, one might still have felt uneasy, as though the observer were suddenly far from the quaint Quaker settlement in Buckinghamshire, as though one were, well, nowhere near anything at all. And then Harris looked up, up to the beams supporting the barn roof, and as he kept looking, he realized that his head was tilting to one side, tilting more and more, as though his subconscious were struggling to envision the beams upside down. And all at once it struck him. The old barn amid the trees near the village of Jordan's was not exactly a barn at all, not exclusively at any rate. It was instead a ship, an old sailing ship, whose materials had been reconfigured and reassembled to make a barn. Well, there was no question at all for clearly the roof beams were in the shape of a ship's keel. And on one of those beams... Well, now, wait a minute. That's the rest of the story. The discovery by Dr. Harris, at least superficially, is not at all surprising because the best wood for construction was reserved in those days for the Royal Navy. English farmers, wishing to build their barns out of sturdy stuff, would often buy sailing vessels about to be scrapped. And that's precisely what a Buckinghamshire farmer named William Russell did to procure wood for his barn in Jordan's. He was obviously correct regarding the quality of the lumber, for there the barn had stood for almost 300 years before Dr. Harris first laid eyes on it. Now, Randall Harris was a scholar, and so for markings on the barn timbers, he sought to identify the original vessel from which the timbers had been scavenged. On a beam taken from the ship's stern, Harris found the letters H-A-R. Harwich, he said to himself, the name of the ship's home port. He reopened the port books, seeking a ship's name that would coincide with other letters emblazoned on the same timber. And what do you know, there it was. A cargo ship that had carried freight between England and France for many years before being declared in ruins and appraised and sold. And yet it was a side trip. A side trip taken three years before she was scrapped that makes the vessel worth remembering. You may doubt if you wish and others have the research of Dr. Rendell Harris completed in the second decade of this century. But before you dismiss it, consider this one last piece of evidence. A fractured crossbeam, a split crossbeam, still in the roof of that old barn. Today, still there, just like the one described in the ship's own log. A beam that split during a storm at sea in 1620. A telltale timber from a watertight time machine linking England's past with your future. The barn was built from the lumber of the Mayflower. And now you know the rest of the story.